game number one out of the way. Yes. We got a W. Um, although, to me, more importantly than a W, we had a team that could play. And so we got some, <laughs> some game speed um, footage. We got some game speed experience. Um, and, you know, on my end, it was pretty exciting. So yeah. uh, I'll let you talk about your impressions just a little bit, and then we'll go into my favorite part, talking about the players. Yeah, absolutely. You know, yeah, to echo your point, you know, I felt like that was a playoff-type game. Um, you know, our staff and kids felt like that. You know, you're in a, you're in a ball game, um, you know, up until the last few minutes of it, and uh, obviously didn't, you know, play perfect. Uh, but, you know, I was able to go and, and get, a, get a win against a quality opponent, you know, really big physical athletic team. Uh, from Texas, and so felt fortunate to come out with a win, and, and as you mentioned, get tested early. Yeah, I mean that's the the quarterback uh, play from Lubbock was pretty outstanding. Yeah, he's, he's he could really good he could do some damage, mm -hmm. uh, and I was glad to see that here, and I was glad to see that we held it together and stuff like that. But what I saw all over the field, all over the field, is people flying around, people making plays. Yeah, it's a week zero game, so yep. I'm sure there's lots of coaching points that sure. you have, and, and that's why you guys do all that film study. And we could spend hours breaking that down, but it's honestly that's that's kind of between you and the players and getting ready for week <laughs> sure. ten. Right. Um, but uh, overall, let's talk about offense because that's what we come out on a Friday night to see this explosive offense right. every year. And I want, I want to steal some thunder because I know that you know who your player of the game is, but I had struggled finding a player of the it game. It was tough. It was definitely tough. You know, obviously the quarterback play, cash. Absolutely. Um, but, but, you know, the quarterback's involved in every play. You know, the two <laughs> most important people on the field are the center and the quarterback because they touch the ball every time, almost. Actually, the center touches every time. The right. quarterback doesn't. True. But uh, two more. So, cash. We had Juju Smith. Mm -hmm. We had – Mayor Morgan, yep. and who actually I want to be the player of the game is because he had a pancake was Hayden Mounts. Yeah, um, doing some good things, but see, I, I always like those those plays when you don't have the ball and you make this monster block and you free up somebody else. I love right. that teamwork. So that's who I had player of the game. Probably uh, if I wanted to go by stats, maybe not him, but I just loved watching him play and it was fun. Well, I can't argue with you. You know, uh, you know, and kind of go. I'll go kind of in, in your order. You know, Hayden Mounts uh, had a huge, huge, huge third down reception, diving reception on our sidelines. If you didn't get a chance to check that out, it was absolutely phenomenal. Um, and also a touchdown, obviously in the back corner of the end zone. Very nice ball by Cash Williams, but also a good route, good catch, all those kind of things. And as you mentioned, just just blocked his his tail off all night long. Did a fantastic job, and also played really good defense too. You know, so you saw him at corner, you saw him at, yeah. at a wide receiver, special teams, etc. Just did a tremendous job, and uh, you know, Hayden Mounts, and, you know, and, and is is one of the you know top athletes you know on, on our team, and has just really worked his his uh, his tail off to get where he's at. You know, and big, strong, physical kid that can do it all, and he's able to put him in a variety of different positions. He has a variety of different skill sets, all those kind of things. Could be more proud of just how he's developed himself into just being an absolutely you know phenomenal uh, player. Um, you know, you mentioned Mayor Morgan. You know, Mayor had uh, you know almost 200 total yards uh, mm -hmm. on the night. If you're talking about you know rushing and, and, and receiving, actually had over 200 yards um, and a couple scores. You know, one one receiving, one rushing. Uh, I thought that he just absolutely you know was dynamic. You know, with his legs, just breaking breaking tackles. He's put on 35 pounds since last year of, uh, of muscle, and you know it obviously shows up in those kind of situations against physical teams. Uh, so you know he could he could have been the guy. Um, you know, other guys I thought just played lights out. You know, Nathan Kiefer had one reception. You know, but if you watch him, just how much he affects a play every single every single play. Just you know, is blocking on the perimeter and getting himself in the right spot. His spacing's always good. Um, just doing his job and does a does a fantastic job. And then also, you know, Titus Hawk. You know, uh, didn't have a reception, uh, but asked him to do so much, making his first start at tight end. You know, and, and just did an absolutely phenomenal job. So couldn't have been more proud of him uh, and the job that he did. Uh, but you know, two that you mentioned. You know, that that we had we we with Co. We had a difficult time as well. Um, and so you know, first player of the game, uh, Cash Williams. Uh, as you mentioned, has had a phenomenal game. I think you know several plays come to mind. Just you know one. Um, him, you know, throwing an absolute just dot to, to Juju on a on a sprint out little yeah. package that we had, um, you know, knowing he, knowing he's going to eat a hit um, and hanging in there and throwing just an absolutely on time ball that was you know one of the one of the better throws and catches I've seen you know since I've been here at Choctaw, 
made plays with his feet as well, made really good decisions all night. Thought he just did an absolutely tremendous job of just, you know, total control of the offense, did absolutely phenomenal. Uh, so he was our first player of the, of, the, of the game offensively. And then the second one you mentioned earlier, uh, Juju Smith. Juju obviously over 100 yards, multiple touchdowns. Uh, affected the game on the perimeter as well, you know, blocked right. really, really well. I uh, was able to, you know, get some rushes, uh, some some receiving yards, all those kind of things, and just, you know, do, just did what he does and has done for the past four years uh, and just produced in, in very timely situations when we needed him. And so uh, two players a game, Cash Williams and Juju Smith. Okay. That seems very, very reasonable. Yeah, it was tough, though. I agree. Uh, but it, I, it very, very tough. You know, but – And let me, let me go back and say this because I should have I mentioned this. Um, you know, you mentioned some knockdowns and stuff. Like our our offensive line just played oh, out, yeah. out of their minds. Um, played absolutely phenomenal. You know, with uh, uh, Mason Tyler, um, Levi Shatswell, uh, Josh McGinnis, um, uh, Alberto uh, Rivas. Um, you know, and, and then also uh, Conlon Grimm now just did absolutely phenomenal. And those guys, you know, one of the best O line performances I've seen us have since I've been here. And yeah, it'd be one of the top ones. And if you watch that, those guys absolutely got after it and did so well, executed against a lot of different fronts and looks and blitz packages and stuff like that. And they're able to like pick that up seamlessly for a week zero game. Um, I was just blown away by them in a week zero, you know. And obviously, you know, every coach in America will say, hey, we got things to work on, which no sure. doubt we do. Uh, but for week zero, it was a very pleasant surprise to watch those guys work. And they did just a, just a tremendous, tremendous job. But yeah, there's some big old boys on the other side of the. Yeah, I mean that was no slouch. The D line was very big, athletic. Linebacker yeah. core was very, very, very physical, um, and athletic as well. And so, um, and then on top of that, you know, they jump from a you know a three down to a four down. Um, you know, sending popping backers, doing different things that you know, showing us different looks and stuff like that. And for our guys to be able to compute all that, um, you know, and take take the coaching, you know, and do it that fast was was really really remarkable. All right. Well, it's a lot of fun on my end. Yeah. I, you know, we, I don't have the full stats on it. I'm sure you do because that's how yeah, it works. Yeah, I mean, we, we, were, we were over 500 yards of offense, you know, which has kind of been a staple since since we've been here. Um, you know, we've averaged, you know, 520 to 550 a game, you know, since we've been here, which is – that's a lot. Um, and we're able to do that against really good defense. You know, again, not perfect, but I was I was impressed with our offense to be able to stack up that amount of yardage. Um, you know, against a really really stout, yeah, big physical and fast defense. Um, but what I was going to say is, you had a lot of people touch the ball too, yeah, which absolutely. is always a good sign. It's not just one or two. Yeah, we mentioned four that touched it a lot, but there's a couple other, and of course Titus. He did a lot of lead blocking for Absolutely. Morgan, so you know that's you know tight ends have to work for a living, right? And don't just get to catch balls and score touchdowns, so right. it's, it's okay. Yeah, absolutely. Um, let's go ahead and move on to the defensive side. Of course, we had some forced fumbles, which is always good to see in game one. We had an interception, right? Yep. And I always like to see that where you get the belt and right. get all that good stuff yeah, going. Absolutely. And, you know, so a lot of guys flying around, you know, that's been a staple of, uh, you know, defense at Choctaw. You know, we say, you know, effort is non-negotiable. You know, that's yeah. uh, 11 gold helmets to the ball. And those guys uh, didn't disappoint on Friday. Um, you know, obviously too many missed tackles was kind of our coaching point, you know, the focus this week and the next two weeks. Uh, but with that, you know, we kind of have a rule. If you're going to miss, you better miss fast. Uh, meaning like, you know, you're going super, super speed, really, yeah. really aggressively to the ball. It felt like our kids did that, um, but able to get some stuff on, on film to build a correct and fix and fix some of those tackling errors that we had. Uh, but, you know, with that said, what, what I love was the, just the aggressiveness, you know, from our kids and just the fight, you know, that they have in them, which, you know, what's, what makes them so special and what makes them so, so fun to coach. Um, you know, and uh, played, you know, over 23 kids on defense, you know, played meaningful minutes uh, the other night, which is a lot, you know, able to rotate a lot of guys in, um, keep that standard high, you know, with those guys. And, um, you know, so really, really proud of them and, and, you know, some of the adjustments that they made, um, you know, because you, you scout somebody, you scout somebody, all these kind of things. But, you know, what you don't know is, you know, week one, obviously anybody can do anything, you know, when you're in your right. first game of the season, you don't have very much film on them. I think we had – like 27 snaps of their of their offense from this year. Obviously, we had film from last year and things like that, but they got a new coordinator, et cetera. And so right. you go back right. and watch what this coordinator has done in his previous schools, um, comes out, did things that they really haven't done at their previous schools, you know. And so for our kids to be able to kind of adjust on the fly and our coaching staff with, with Coach Clark and our defensive staff did a tremendous job just being able to react live and have, you know, have uh, real-time adjustments, you know, in-game and all those kind of things that, that helped kind of set us apart, I felt like, uh, you know, going into the second, third, fourth quarter, 
uh, to be able to make those adjustments was, was really special. And so, um, you know, couldn't be more proud of those guys and, uh, you know, 11 gold helmets to the ball and those guys did that. And so we had a couple players of the game. I want to hear for who you think first. You want me I'll, first? Yeah. And then well, I'll kind of tell you what we want um, I have two. Um, we went Co as well. So, so yeah. So, so I had, I had Rocco. So. Okay. That'd be a great one. Um, and then I had um, number zero. Yep. Cole Tyra. I had to, I had to go track that number down. Apparently yep. that's a New Jersey or something that you Yeah. So, in. so the story behind that is, uh, you know, our theme this year is variant and, and, you know, and how we define that there's several definitions, but the definition that we choose is, is something that differs slightly from the standard. And so obviously the gold standard has been around for quite some time. Um, you know, at this point, you've had a lot of success. And it's like, you know, you don't want to blow the whole thing up, but you do need to make some tweaks to continue to sure. elevate and get better each and every year. Um, and so, you know, that's our variant. And our, uh, our new variant jersey this year is number zero. And so you'll see that in that, that jersey will change uh, each each game. And so okay. Cole okay. Tyra, was our, Cole Tyra, if he should have been listed, and he was listed on the roster as zero slash three, because um, obviously three is his home jersey, but he wore zero that night. And so, you know, each week you'll see a different kid in zero and whoever we okay. feel like is the variant of the week, you know, and has had a great practice and, uh, you know, has continued to go above and beyond and be 1% better than what they have been. Um, and Cole was our, our first, uh, you know, week, you know, first game recipient of the variant jersey, number zero. And so um, he was our, our co-player of the game. Um, you know, showed up, uh, just tremendous effort all night, just did his job to the extreme, just always plays extremely, extremely hard. Um, and I can say talk about Cole Tyra all night, uh, but one of my favorite stories about Cole is, you know, I was talking to Cole and, and obviously we coach middle school as well and go down and coach middle school in the mornings before school, uh, our varsity staff. And, you know, I'm, I'm having him come talk to our middle school because the interesting thing about Cole is, you know, Cole's played, you know, football since he's been in elementary school. Sure. And the very first game that Cole has ever started was last Friday versus Lubbock. Really? And so if you wow. if you just think about the amount of like mental toughness um, and just, uh, you know, just just sheer determination that someone has to possess to have that. Didn't start in elementary, didn't play in middle school, you know, doesn't, didn't ever start. And then finally, you know, not only is he a starter, but named team captain to his senior year. Wow. You know, I think it's really, really cool story and just a testament to um, just what a great person that he is and how tough he is and just continue to persevere, you know, throughout time. And so, I think he's great. You know, it's a great story for everybody to listen to um, and have him also not only do that, but also go perform well and be player of the game was super, super cool. Yeah. Uh, so couldn't be more proud of, of Cole. And then another, um, you know, our, our co-player of the game was someone that you probably didn't notice at all uh, because normally uh, the bad thing about their job is when they do their job, no one really notices them, and that was D Green. Okay, yeah. Uh, and so, you know, uh, uh, Dejon Green, now that, you know, a uh, corner, um, you know, had – Kid has zero receptions, you yeah. know, and for, for zero yards. And so a lot of times those don't show up, but the reason is is because he's not open ever. <laughs> right, know? right. So when they're not ever open, you can't throw him the ball. Um, and he just did a tremendous job just doing his job to the extreme, um, you know, taking away an entire side of the field. Uh, for, as you mentioned, the electric quarterback uh, had nowhere to go. And so Cole Tyre, D. Green, two players of the game. I, 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 think, that's, I think that's great. Yep. Um, just because you talk about Cole Tyre, I, I like that story. Was he the tackle leader? I believe he may have been. He was close. Well, yeah, he was close for sure. And I'll talk to Coach Close about I, that. But what, what I noticed about him um, that I was so impressed with him, he just seemed to be able to do those angles, you know, all those drills that you do or yeah, get does a job. Angle, 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 and just the, the technique. He just seemed to be in the right place at the right time yep. a lot. So yeah, absolutely. I, I just r really like seeing that. So defense is great. Um, Loved it. Um, of course, it was very challenging. We had a couple mm -hmm. turnovers ourselves, and so the Absolutely. defense had to step up big time. Um, they, they kicked a lot too. Yeah, which, which, yeah uh, good, good kicker. All those things, uh, you know. And as you mentioned, you know, our defense had to bow their neck. You know, we got a saying internally: if you give us an inch, we'll defend it. Um, you know, they made us, uh, you know, believe that. You know, because we got yeah. in some bad situations uh, by some, you know, turnovers in the first half from the offense and defense. You know, never panicked. Just went out, did their jobs, and did it very effectively. Okay. Let's let's go through our, our special teams players and our practice players. Yeah, Spe All special those teams. Other guys. You know, obviously didn't get a lot a lot of work, but uh, uh, we had we had a co as well. Uh, Titus Hawk fair caught a lot of balls on on kickoff That's important. Uh, return, uh, which you know again like I, I tell our kids and we always have honest conversations like hey I would love to tell you exactly what they're gonna do but like right, you right. don't really know you know you don't the amount of data you have is so limited that 
you know, I'm like, anyone can come out and do anything. And so, you know, we had to make some adjustments live and, and Titus Hawk was able to do that and fair caught, um, you know, multiple multiple balls and got us out of some bad situations. And then also on the other end, um, punt return was, uh, the co was Bryce Tapley who did the same thing as well. You know, safely returned multiple punts, um, you know, fair caught them, make really good decisions, all those kind of things. And so both those guys impacted the game were, were our uh, special teams player of the week. Okay. Switching gears, uh, scout team player of the week. There we go. Uh, you know, have really, a bunch of really good uh, guys to choose from. Um, did this last week that, that did a tremendous job. Uh, but the offensive uh, scout team player of the week, so this is chosen by the offensive staff that, that's, you know, the defense running against them, gave us just an absolutely tremendous look, getting us ready for, for Lubbock's uh, defense. Uh, was Jacob Schaumer. And he's uh, yeah. Schaumer's, uh is a sophomore. It's going to be a just tremendous player. You'll see him on special teams all time, number 13, going to be an absolute star. Um, you know, has, has bought in the weight room, all those things. He continually gets better and better each and every year. You know, I just can't wait to see the finished product of him. And, and you know, you'll see him on the field in varsity snaps um, as he keeps doing what he's doing now. Um, you know, in meaningful downs because he's proven himself, you know, on scout team, proven himself on special teams, proven himself um, also in varsity big time games. So super excited about his future um, and, and, and the future star that he's going to be. Um, and then lastly, uh, Connor Goins was, uh, we played, uh, played offense against our defense all week, um, you know, and, and got us prepared. A guy that's just willing to do whatever. Again, it's kind of transformed his body and you'll see him on special teams as well. Um, and just done an absolutely tremendous job and, you know, look forward to watching his development throughout the season. All right. Well, that's that's good to hear. And, and then my theme, not your theme, but my theme is is building a better Choctaw or dealing with all this construction. Yep. But but like we we said last week, is is those scout team players, those practice team players. Well, almost everybody that starts has been one of those scout team players and practice yeah. players. And we, so we said that last week on the show, right? And so exactly yeah. what you're saying is it's really cool. And so it's like it's literally almost every single one has been a, a scout team player of the week that's a current starter. You know, and I think that's really cool. I, I think that's that's a great great place to be in. So let's go ahead and switch. We got a bye week, and so mm -hmm. we're, we're probably not going to have a show next week because we have a bye week, and, right. and that's good because you have a Thursday game, mm -hmm. and uh, it's in Kansas. It is in Kansas, and it's a, a Kansas State champion. That's right from last year, which you know who knows what team they have this year, but they they were pretty good last year, and they got some they got some guys uh, returning. They'll so. be good. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about what we might be watching when we watch yeah. this Kansas game. Yeah, I think it's kind of cool. You know, Max Preps, which is kind of the go-to on, you know, high school football information sure. right across the country, you know, arguably probably the number one site, I would have guessed, for high school information. Um, you know, releases every year like a, you know, top school in each state. Um, you know, the number one school in Kansas is Gardner Edgerton, you know, of all, of all classes. Right. We're in the largest classification, but that is the number one ranked team in all of Kansas at uh, any level. Um, and then obviously the number one ranked team, you know, preseason in Oklahoma was Bixby. So it's like, you know, two out of three of those guys, you know, you play in non-district, yep. um, you know, leads to a very challenging slate um, that we've chosen. Um, and they'll be, they'll be tremendous. You know, uh, Coach Owen and his staff do a really, really good job at, at Gardner Edgerton, uh, which is a suburb-ish of Kansas City. Um, of just preparing the guys, They'll, they run a option-based offense, run a flex bone, which you guys are familiar with that. Um, it, it's very, very difficult to stop. That's very physical. It'll be a very physical uh, ball game. And then defensively, um, you know, they're big, fast, and, and, and athletic, you know. And so we'll have our absolute, you know, work cut out for us. You watch them on film and just how hard their kids play, you know, jumps off, you know, jumps out of their film immediately and just how well coached they are. You know, they are a very, 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 very good football team. Um, you know, and uh, it, you know, we absolutely have our work cut out for us. Uh, but, you know, again, it's, it's kind of fun to see that challenge, you know, early, um, you know, to hopefully prepare you for late. And so, um, you know, you'll, you'll see, uh, like I said, a very fast, you know, kind of man coverage based defense um, that can get multiple, multiple different looks. And then offensively, um, you know, we looked at what run an option based attack, you know, kind of operating out of the flex bone. They return, you know, a big, a big prospect at quarterback again. So this will be like our second, you know, big time, you know, division one quarterback that we've seen, okay. um, you know, 6'4", 220 pound kid that can run it and throw it, uh, running the option, very, very smart kid, makes really good decisions, you know, and just watch them um, go up there, you know, or go, when we go up there, obviously it's difficult on Thursday, it's difficult, to, you know, five and a half, six hour drive, all those kind of things, you know, are against us, you know, in doing that. And so we get to kind of see really quickly, how can we handle a major road trip like that? How can we handle, you know, playing in a new stadium and big, big time situation against a very well coached, 
um, in very good teams. So absolutely have our work cut out for us. I think it's cool and a great opportunity for our kids and our program to go play the number one team in the state of Kansas, and I think that's a really cool opportunity. I think it's a great opportunity. I didn't know about the flex bond. I'm glad you're here yeah. to let us know yeah. about that. You know, the T, the T, the, the wishbone, the flex bone, the wing T, uh, well, one of the aspects of that that you're going to be seeing is there's a lot of misdirection. There's mm -hmm. a lot of a lot of people that can get the ball, and so it's, it's assignment football on defense where if you don't get your assignment, there's an open man. Absolutely. You, know, um, and you, you miss one tackle and, you know, it's 88, you know, and so yeah. that's, that's where it's stressful about it because it's not like, quote, you know, a 2024 traditional attack, you know, that we're going to see every week. Um, and so, you know, that, that, all, that, that makes an extra layer of difficulty, you know, in trying to prepare for them just on a, you know, not necessarily a short week, but, you know, just mid-season, all those kind of things, you know, trying to prepare for those guys makes it even more difficult. Okay. Well, that's, that's, uh, I'm, I'm excited about that. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm a student of X's and O's and, and football, and I just love it's some really of those cool. older formations, especially when they run well. But they, well, I would say, you know, any offense is a great offense when it's coached well and you have good players. You know, and if you do those kind of things, and, and they have both those. You know, they have really good coaches and they have good players. And so you can run about anything when you have those guys and have it be successful as long as you have a complete system. Um, and they do. You know, they, they have a system in place. All right. Well, I, you know, that pretty much covers most of the stuff. How was your late day? Labor Day was great. You know, we, we labored on Labor Day, um, you know, which... Uh, you don't which get you know, off? <laughs> no, we don't get it off. Yeah, that's you know, too bad. But, but it's fun. You know, we were able to come up and, uh, you know, go over some stuff and, you know, really focus on us on this off week and, um, you know, just obviously getting pre prepared for our you know, future opponents, but but also, like, correct some mistakes from Friday, you sure. know, where you're not having to just jump right into the next opponent immediately, you know, which you kind of get caught up in during the season. It's like... You know, if you're not careful, you're just preparing for the next, 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 and not really taking care of like you know the the fundamentals that you need to be taking care of, uh, because the turnaround of football is always so fast. Well, I'm glad that you're working because I get to see the product. Um, <laughs> but I enjoyed it. You know, having, it was a lot of fun. Had a nice little pot roast and yeah, uh, yeah. some potatoes, and and I had a good old time at the lake. There so you go. Well, we, we didn't get that, but but we got to do what we love and be around our kids, and so we had a good time. Well. I'll probably be paying for it next week. I, I, as far as I'm, not yeah, it is next week. Yeah, as far as I know, I'm going. So okay, I'm just going. Uh, we're gonna. I'm gonna do the 10-hour drive, and we're gonna get some uh, streaming going and bring you this exciting action. So absolutely. Uh, really, that's that's all I gotta say. I'm I'm excited about talking to you after that game because there's gonna be a lot to look at. So yeah, absolutely. Until next time, stay gold. <laughs>